Okay, I think we should now be live. Let me just check everything is running. But yeah, okay, all looks good. Well, yeah, welcome to another live stream again. Um, so this was postponed. This was supposed to be last week's. So we had some internet problems, but they're now been sorted. So we're back and yeah, we're going to be diving into or playing around with using doubler in sound design or in a context of uh, yeah, sound design. So that means a few different things. I'll go through that in a sec. Um, I'll wait for this to catch up in case we've started a bit too soon. So um, yeah, basically what we'll be going through is, is a few different ways that doubler can get involved with sound design. So what is sound design, I guess, first of all? So sound design, ooh, there we go, we hear some noises actually first. Let me go and <laughs> disarm this. So yeah, so when I say sound design, we basically mean um, how W can get involved with the actual audio that you're hearing and not just say like the melody or not just the, the rhythm. How can it get involved with the actual, yeah, the sound design of the, the synths or instruments that you're using, how the drums sound, how a track sound whilst you're maybe performing it live. So all of that is, uh, there's ways that Dublin can get involved with that. So what that's what we'll be exploring today. Um, I guess a few disclaimers. One is that I am not a sound designer, uh, which you'll probably hear. Um, so I'm kind of just looking at how Dublin can fit into these and the interesting ways you can do that. Some of the sounds I'm playing with, you know, are more just to demonstrate uh, a point, but you know, you can tell me if they sound good or not. <laughs> The second is that I'll probably be making some very weird noises throughout the stream as we're kind of doing and playing around with the sounds, with the voice. I'm probably going to be making some weird noises. So <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Um, yeah, when... Let me move this around. Oh, yeah, so as usual as well, I'll be keeping an eye on the chat. So if you have any messages or uh, sort of demos you'd like to see... Um, then do post them in the chat. It doesn't have to be related to sound design as well. Any doubler related questions or stuff that you want to see done, um, let me know. Um, we've also got other people as well in the chat room as well, so they can hopefully answer any questions you've got. So I guess we may as well just dive straight in. Let me just move this around. So as is a common theme in our streams, I'll be using Ableton, but all the stuff we're doing isn't Ableton specific. It can be used in any door. So it's more about the principle. So let me move this around. Okay, I should now be up in the corner. Let me know if you can't see anything properly. I sometimes forget that I'm in this corner here, so I'll make sure Dub is visible throughout. I'll keep this open so I can see the chat. So yeah, so what I've got basically is a few different kind of instruments uh, and stuff set up here, which I can use to demonstrate different ways that Dublin can get involved in the sound design process, whether that be um, playing with effects that are going on after the instruments, whether that means actually getting involved with the instrument parameters itself, or also taking a look at um, how Dublin's kind of live and real time uh, kind of use allows you to play with not just the sounds you're doing with triggers, but also other synths and production that's going on. So through things like side chaining and stuff. Um, if you have any uh, uh, questions throughout, let me know. Uh, I'll try and explain everything as kind of as simply as possible. But yeah, we, we're not going to be focusing really on say like how I sing a melody or the pitch of the melody. It's more about how you sing or how you use your voice and how that can in turn affect the sounds of instruments. So one of the advantages of, of Doubler is that, uh, like I just said, it, it's not about the way or what you sing, it's the way you sing it as well. And in a traditional MIDI keyboard, if I play a chord, uh, every time I hit that chord on the keys, it's gonna be basically the same each time. You might be velocity sensitive, unless you've maybe got an MPE, um, uh, which is uh, something like a Rolly or something like that, 
which has some more controls, you're mostly going to get the same sound each time. So doubler has the advantage in that every time I hit a chord, I can actually voice it slightly differently. So I could sing it like D or da or do or something like that. And uh, based on the way I do that, I can start to change effects and parameters. So it's a real strength of doubler that it's we can get a bit deeper than you would with a traditional MIDI keyboard, for example, because we have these extra parameters and there's extra things you can do with your voice at the same time. So let's demonstrate that. So I've got basically this palm guitar sound. I'll put this, I'll put some chords on. So we'll have some chords on on Dublin. So what's happening in Dublin in terms of pitch and melody wise is that I'm hitting a note. I'm in C Phrygian, the scale, it's going to output a chord. Dun, dun. Can we hear that as well? Let me know if you can't hear that. Dun, 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 dun. So you'll hear it's got some effects on it there. But basically, Doubler is outputting a chord to this instrument. And we've used these dials on the right hand side and mapped these to certain parameters in this. And what that means is the way I sing changes how the sound of this instrument is played back. So I'll show you the mappings I've got if we go into MIDI map mode. So I'm on CC11 on the cutoff and on the reverb. So I'll explain the control dials, I guess, first briefly before we have examples. So the control dials on the right hand side are mapped to the vowels E, R, U, and then the fourth is M, which means envelope. So that's basically intensity of your voice. So they move basically depending on how I'm singing. You may have seen this in some of our other videos. If they go E, R, U, E, R. And the envelope, yeah, is intensity. So if I kind of go quieter or if I move the mic further away and bring it closer, I can bring the envelope up. And if you go to the assign tab, each of these dials has a CC number that's allocated to it. So CC numbers are what your door uses for MIDI mapping. So basically when I went into MIDI map mode here and you saw they're linked, they're on CC 11, which basically means they're mapped to the envelope here. Um, if you haven't used the Assign tab much before, I'd really recommend exploring these dials and going in depth because you can really get some really fun results with the, the sounds you're, you're playing with. So min and max on the left-hand side of a dial basically means the range of that dial. So if I go, ah, uh, yeah, my dial can go all the way to the top because I've raised the max amount. Everyone's vowels are going to be slightly different. It might depend on your like even things like accent or you know whatever. But if you can't, if you find you can't get your R vowel all the way to the top, so I can't. If I go E R, then I can lower this range E R E R, and I can get basically the full scale of that. And on the right hand side, this um, this meter here is the C the CC output. So CC values go from 0 to 127, and this basically means like the min and max. So this is going to be the full range, and if I had it lowered, then the cutoff, for example, would never go above this amount. But I'll, it's a easy to explain that with some examples. But so what does that mean for the synth? That basically means I've mapped the envelope to different pra the cutoff on the reverb. So if I sing softly with a low intensity, then the sound's going to be different to when I sing loudly um, and with a, a high intensity. So I've mapped them in a way that low means the filter cutoff is low and the reverb is high, so we should get very soft, big, spacey sounds. And the reverse should happen where if I voice loud, we get a high cutoff and a low reverb, so a bit more of a drier sound. I've actually also put a velocity plugin in before this to... Um, because obviously the synth is velocity sensitive as well. So as well as dynamics, with the that if I sang softly, the vo the synth would naturally be softer anyway. To stop that from happening, I've kind of boosted the velocity so it's so it's audible basically, so you can just hear it. Um, but you could now you can also make it velocity sensitive at the same time. But I'll show you this with the you can see the dial moving here. So let's sing softly and see what we get. Tell me if you want it up or down. Ba, ba. If we <laughs> arm it first. So you see that chord there is quite reverby and it's quite low. But if I sing loudly, 
You see in the bottom left here, if you keep an eye out, the filter cutoff goes up, the reverb goes down. So what that's allowing me to do is basically play with the sound of the chord, even though the chord is basically the same every time or I'm moving it about, how I do it is changing the sound of it. So this is kind of one aspect of how you could get involved with yeah, the sound design with, with doubler. So this isn't just on envelope as well, that could apply to the, the vowels, which we'll go into in a sec. But I can show you that with a longer note. D ba, 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 ba. <laughs> so you can see basically those dials moving on that side. So as well as just the velocity coming up, we're actually controlling effects. And let's play with that a bit more. So let's add in some audio effects as well. So as well as playing with the actual parameters on the synth itself, we can add in an audio effect. And I've got... So this sounds quite cool, and maybe I want this to come in, and I'll change the effect of this. So just hear it dry. Dun, 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 dun. That's dry, and then all the way wet. Dun, 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 dun. We've got this quite cool wobbly d uh, delay going on. So maybe as well as the velocity, I maybe want to use a vowel to start changing this. So this is the ribbon here. So. I'll show you now, this is where I can show you an example of the MIDI mapping process. <laughs> if I move the mic away. So this changes for every door, but basically I'm going to go into MIDI map mode, select that ribbon roller, and then let's map this to an R vowel. So I hit map in the assign tab. They're now linked, you see it's, oh, they're now linked, you see that's on CC20. I can exit MIDI map mode. And basically what this means now, if I sing with an E vowel, then the, that would be more of a dry signal. And if I sing with an R vowel, then that would be more of a wet signal. So as well now as the intensity playing with that cutoff and the reverb, I now also have an extra layer of control of the effect afterwards with the vowel. So an E is low down. So what we're doing there, you can see based on how I'm singing, I'm wobbling around between different effects and sounds. And I'm in real time getting involved with the sound design as well as the actual pitch that's going on. So you can still, I'm still outputting the chords and controlling what's actually being played with the root notes I'm singing. And you'll see in Dublin at the bottom, the chords coming out. So it's quite an extreme example. You can hear all sorts going on, but that's kind of a principle of how you can get involved with not just the initial parameters in the synth, but then also effects afterwards using some vowels. I'll show you maybe a more extreme example and one that's not, because that's, that's quite plucky sound, so that's me just kind of going like, duh, duh, duh. So let's do longer held notes. So this sound, for example, I've got is reactor is laser bass, which is quite an extreme bass sound. Let's turn the chords off so we just get single notes. Cool. So laser bass as well is free if you're interested. I think it's a great synth. Um, and you saw there, there was the parameters we got involved with, and we've done the same in here. So what I've done is this parameter here, that uh, what was around, basically will change the uh, this these these periodic filters. If you're not too 
uh, bothered about synthesis, don't really know. Like this, basically, that dial changes the sound of it. And I've mapped that to my R vowel. And I've also then mapped the envelope, which I said before uh, is CC11, to the rate of that LFO. So it's moving the bass sound. And as I get more intense, it's going to get a lot quicker. Just to kind of emphasize as well that this kind of like filter, um, I've also got an auto filter that kind of does the same thing that's basically moving with a E. So with an R vowel. So this bass on its own, just with seen with an E, is just kind of a pretty plain kind of like E, 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 E. e. Um, nothing particularly special. But then if I give an R vowel, uh, then that opens the filter. So that's one element that's adding on to the bass. So if I go Cool. So our vowel then adds this larger high end. And then you start to hear as well the rate that the synth is wobbling at is also the intensity. So if I do it quietly, it's pretty stable and slow. But if I actually up the intensity, then I get some really crazy lasery sounds going on as I go. Let's do a bit even lower. Cool. So that's basically we're starting to warp the sound of the synth in real time with our voice, which is not something you can do, obviously, with a traditional MIDI keyboard because you're playing certain individual sounds. You can map other things, but this is basically giving me re real time control. Um, this kind of synth and these things is quite fun. It's in the style of Gabble Laser. I don't know if you've, if anyone has heard of him, but uh, his music's great. Um, and that kind of uses especially things like uh, the laser bass and reactor and has some like envelope. So if you wanna add to the craziness, you can also then, as well as getting involved with the synth, there's an extra layer that you can play with that as well as the synth in real time, you can also change the sound of a pre-playing kind of piece of audio. So um, an example is these hi-hats that I've got, which are just a bunch of like random hi-hats playing at different kind of, it's just a string here with a chance of them playing at like 50%. And this filter, like the one that was on the bass synth, is also linked to a vowel. So if I go e so what's happening there is if I'm in an E, the high ends of the hi-hats are actually drawn in a bit and they get a bit more softer, dulled sound. And if I go with an R, then they come out more. So with the synth, you'll hear those two together. So a very extreme example, but what you're sort of hearing there is as the bass is dulled, the higher hats are dulled at the same time. As we open up with an R vowel in that real time, we get in the high ends of the hats and the synth is kind of doing some crazy laser stuff. So if you like add in kicks, this is going to sound very chaotic, but I think it's quite fun. Um, in real time, you can kind of do these big warping changes. Basically, you get the principle there in that we're warping and changing in real time, and that's something that you can play with uh, and, and hone in. Um, I guess what I didn't explain was that how this is recorded as well, I mean, how you can edit that. So let's keep these off. And with that crazy bass, if I record something in, you'll see that the notes that are coming in are just going to be whatever I'm singing in the one pitch. So I'll show you the MIDI that's recorded into this track. We don't want that on. Let's turn that off and record something into here. Yeah. 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 
So, in the actual MIDI information that we're recording there, we're just seeing, let's get rid of that first note, this, this one long note, but all those changes are actually still recorded in the MIDI information, but you'll see them actually in the uh, automation. So if we go into MIDI control, you can see it's actually mapping or recording these mappings that we've done. So let's just arm these again. So this is my, which parameter is this? So this is the time, so this is the velocity, and, oh no, sorry, so this is the LFA rate, so this is the velocity of what I was just doing, and the periodic filter, this is the R valve that I'm doing that's going up and down. If we want, a good tip is to kind of like simplify the envelope, so we just have a few automation points, we'll do that on both. Simplify this. And what you can do if you want to, once you've recorded, then you can tweak and edit these. So. so there we're getting that up and down sound. But let's say we actually want this one to go down and then up really quickly. We can edit these points. So, yeah, uh, basically what we're doing is performing it live there, but you can actually record that information as, uh, as these points and, and play with them if you're not familiar with, with automation. But, cool. So what I was mentioning before at the end of or this little example is that the, the, the hi-hats were also being affected by what I was doing with my voice. And in a similar vein, we can actually use the kind of real-time aspect of doubler to play with the sounds of an idea of a track as well so say i've got some triggers so i've got some triggers in doubler here trained cool so these triggers on this drum rack are just playing these few different sounds we've got quite a big boomy distorted bass and some Let's re-record these because they're a bit old. Cool. So we've got triggers playing a drum kit, and that's all good. But how with Doubler can we use these triggers to actually get involved with, say, the sound design or something else? So this isn't strictly related to Doubler, but is more about how that real-time use can be fun to play with other synths that's going on. So say I've got a synth line going on here. And so we've got basically this little loop. Now we can do what we did before as well, where we've got a big echo on it. If we wanted, we could have a play around and map certain vowels to these dials so we wanted to play around with that we can map a vowel to that but if we stick a gate on it what the gate is doing is basically keeping that line at a really low volume and then when it hears the trigger come through it's going to open up that gate and it's basically going to uh, become louder. So when that big distorted bass boom comes in, that opens up with it at the same time. So this is actually linked to the audio. So it's audio from that drum kit. So like I said, this is not really strictly related to the triggers, but it's using the real time trigger. So when you're beatboxing, you're not just beatboxing the rhythm of the drums. You're actually also changing the sound design of so maybe synths that you're going over the top of. So if I now... So you hear what's happening there is every time I hit the trigger, the gate opens, the sound comes through, and I get the kind of this big effect going on. Yeah, 
So basically, this is a way to have like your triggers and the drums and the rhythms you're doing play with Sandstein as well. So as well as the MIDI mapping though of vowels and envelopes and things, you can also MIDI map these triggers as well to anything you like. So I wasn't using the hi-hat, I was just using the kick and the snare. So maybe I actually want to use this hi-hat that's in here for um, basically MIDI mapping to turn on a certain parameter or sound that's going on with that synth. So I've got a crystallizer on that synth. If you're not familiar with Sound Toys plugins as well, they are super fun. And when it comes to sound design, they are like, they're basically great. You know, they can do all sorts of crazy stuff and they're really good fun. But I've got crystallizer. So say I want this to go to apply when I hit a certain sound with a trigger. So I can do that by MIDI mapping the on button. Let's delete that of that effect. And then if I make that trigger sound or you can hit it and just click it. You see that's mapped to the note F sharp one. And if I make this trigger sound, you see that's turning on and off. So what that allows me to do is basically in real time, whilst I'm doing a, uh, a beat, change the sound of the synth as well by just introducing a new sound and then it flips and then I can, yeah, it's kind of like a performance space, but that's all recorded as well in automation. So let's play that back. So with the crystallizer off and then when I make a sound, you'll hear the crystallizer come on and then it's gonna change. again it's now off running out of breath there but yeah, so that's how, even with triggers, it's not just about the rhythms on a particular drum rack or samples you can controlling, but it's about m even mapping the certain sounds that you're using to an effect, and then in real time, being able to warp and change the, the sound design. So that's triggers as well. Let's have a look at pitch bend as well, actually. I'm moving quite quickly through all of these. Um, if you do have any questions, let me know. I know, like I said, these sounds are a bit uh, crazy, but I think they're a bit more extreme and fun to at least show, yeah, uh, how you might use it in, uh, in your door. One uh, other thing as well. So we spoke, spoke about like, the vowels and how the way you sing affects the, the, the triggers. We spoke about, uh, sorry, aspects, um, affects the sound design and effects and whatnot. We also spoke about triggers and the way they can make changes uh, in real time. But there's also the pitch as well that you're singing can be used in the sound design process. So one way to do this is using the pitch bend feature to bend up or down and then being able to create rises or drops in certain sounds by bending your note up and down, by bending your voice up and down. So when I go like ooh, we can actually have that link to any sound we like and then, yeah, get involved and create our own uh, riser. So how would we do that? So I've basically got a basic sub sign on this one here. It's got everything sort of turned all the way down, which is the volume. So if I play this, let's change the octave. If I arm it, then it's just a basic, uh, straight sine wave you might want headphones for this bit if it gets a bit low or if you can't hear it but we can use the pitch bend feature in the bottom left here so if you turn this on and we can set the pitch bend range also we'll put this up to the maximum amount which is I think actually in our synth is 24 steps 
So when I pitch bend is at 24, that basically means it allows me to bend up or down two octaves from the initial note before it will hit a new note. I don't know if I can actually even do that with my voice, but we'll give it a best go as we can. And then in our synth, so in that sine wave down here, I've got the pitch bend at the bottom here matching as well to um, plus or minus 24. So that again means that they're, yeah, can bend an octave, two octaves up or down. It's really important that the pitch bend range matches in your synth and in doubler. So yeah, make sure they're always matching in case you get any weird bends. But now, basically in doubler, I can bend up or down and this is gonna create a like riser on a bass or in the other way down would create a drop. This is gonna sound quite funny with my voice, but if you pretend, well, I can just turn my voice down, but if you hear just the result, it's just a rising bass. <laughs> so the sound design, the actual pitch bend and how it's bending up or down is being affected with the way I'm going up or down with the voice. So it's quite hard to do that with on a traditional MIDI controller with a pitch bend wheel because it's um, you can set it to certain amounts, but it doesn't go naturally um, like up or down as much as you can with your voice. So it allows that extra layer. Like I said, I don't know if you can hear that. I'll record it so you can actually see that pitch bend automation. Maybe we'll start lower. My voice's range is not very high. <laughs> I don't know if that's... I'm going to turn my voice down and I'll turn this up. <laughs> so that is basically creating a riser or a chord there. So this is what I was talking about where you... let me turn my voice back up. So this is what I was talking about. I was saying I'm going to be making some funny noises. So me going is just translated really naturally into this bass. So if we listen to that back, there's our riser effect. So it's sound design basically closely matching your voice and yeah, synthesis uh, if you like. I'll let's stick some distortion so it's like super obvious if if you are listening on something that's can't really play lower subs there you go and likewise back down again like i was saying before the midi note that you're actually looking at is just one note and although we're getting that big drop, that drop is not coming from the, the, this, the note that's being played. It's the pitch bend information. So you see, if we go to MIDI control and pitch bend, here's that drop that I, with, I'm doing with my voice as I go do. And likewise, you can simplify that envelope. And yeah, we've just got a few automation points and we can even edit those. Maybe we actually want to put up a really crazy high in the middle. So it's really good also to think about your voice in not just like, uh, oh, I'm singing my melody like da, 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 whatever. It's actually how I'm singing it. If I sing it like da, 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 how could that be different to if I actually sang it like do, 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 do. I know it sounds silly when you're voicing that out loud, but it does make quite an impact. Um, and you can record those changes live and yeah, get involved with sound design that way. Um, Let's have, we can have a play around with some other sounds. These are the ones that I just got loaded up. If you have any questions, like I said, let me know. Um, with that pitch bend as well that I just mentioned, um, we do have a video coming out very soon that goes in depth with pitch bend. So if you are interested, we'll have one coming out hopefully within the next couple of weeks or so um, with different ways that you can use pitch bend in your kind of work. I guess. These are the ones I had pre-planned, but let's go ad-lib them. If no one has any questions, let's just play around with different effects and sounds and see where we can get to with the voice. So let's turn this off and let's do, let's go back to some chords and let's, let's go back on this track and we'll play around with some different instruments. If anyone has anything particular they want to see, let me know. I can give it a go. Let's just delete all of this. 
And we'll have a look in. Let's go for something super basic again. Nope, don't like that one. Let's have a look in. Let's do a pad, because pads obviously work quite nicely naturally with things like effects. Do you have any nice pads in here potentially? I'm not sure we do. No, let's just do a pad from here. Pad, pad, pad. Sure, let's go. This one's a bit cheesy sounding. Who is the missing when you shame the laser bus? The one who used a lot of it in their music. So that is um, Gabor Laser, um, who does really crazy, I guess you would call it experimental club music, um, which basically pri it's, it's very satisfying synthesis in which it consists of primarily um, the laser bass with um, yeah kicks and hi-hats. Um, so let me... I can write, let me write the name in the chat for you. Do, 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 do. Cool. Yeah, if you're into it, then yeah, I, I love that sort of music. Um, do, do, do. Where was he with this pad? Um, yeah, like I mentioned as well, that is is free as well. Um, the synth and a few others are just free with the basic version of Native Instruments Reactor, I believe, or maybe it's Contact or something. They have like a basic free level that includes some synths that I think are particularly like powerful. Like you can get some really crazy sounds out of these. And yeah, all for free. So mm, do download them. Um, this chord. Okay, so those chords are quite high up. <laughs> Let's put the octave down. So we c let's see how we can screw around with this sound using our voice. So there's things on here, which is always like a classic, you know, mapping filters to vowels. So let's stick that on an R. Then let's go a bit weirder and let's play with the rhythm of it as well based on how we sing. So let's maybe put on tremolator. And let's play with the rhythm of that pad sound with our voice. Cool, that sounds good. Maybe let's change this to make it even more obvious. So the filter cutoff actually lets me. Use, oh, this is a good example actually how I can show you the um, the minimax value range of in the assign tab. So yeah, the E val you see basically the filter cutoff in the bottom left. Actually, do we have the mouse pointer thing so you can see? Um, I can't remember what it's called. I'm sure I'm sure we had a thing. What is it? Oh, whatever. But basically, in the bottom left, the filter cutoff, if I'm singing with an E, is all the way down, so you can't hear it at all. E That's crazy, that. E and maybe I don't... And let's take this limit off. Maybe I don't want it to go all the way down. So this is where these uh, on the right-hand side come into play. So I could change this in Ableton, where on this filter cutoff, I can see CC20 analog pig. I can change the min and max range in here, but you can also do it quickly in Dabbler. So if I want to lower the bottom range, so this is the lower end, and I can put that to here, and then now that filter will never go below a set amount. Yeah. 
Yeah, so now we're never going all the way down so we can hear that. So that's an R valve, but yeah, let's play with the depth on a treble eight as well. Let's do it even slower actually. Let's do a slow one. It's got some Oh, I do like that. We love a bit of a weird rhythm. Uh, do, 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 do. So Frey just asked a question of course. I will answer that in a second. Yes. Um, let me quickly have a play with this. So let's try and map the depth of that tremolo effect to an E vowel. So as I go from E so that sounds quite nice we're basically getting a low filter with a rhythm and then with a high filter we're getting these nice clean laid out pads I will, yeah, I will answer this chord question in just a second. I'm just going to add a massive reverb on the end of it because why not? And then <laughs> we'll move on. What do we want? Valhalla DSP. Let's put on massive reverb that also comes in maybe with the. We would want that to come in with the R, I think. So with the E. We're getting rhythmic lows that are dryish, and then with an R, we get super massive, big reverbs. <laughs> But you get the idea there. Um, so, can you map vowels? So, if I was asking, can you map vowels to trigger a different chords, trigger different chords when singing the same note? So, like singing C with an R vowel makes a C minor chord, and singing an A E vowel creates a C minor seven. So, yes, you could do that with. Let's find something simple. This probably requires a bit of vocal accuracy to make sure you're hit, hitting like the C each time. So I'll try my best. I'm sure you, everyone knows who's watched my streams before that I'm not particularly accurate with my voice, but that's okay because we have key locks. <laughs> so let's find a, like a key. So the chords feature in Dubler that was going on there. Da, da. Oh, it's so distorted that one. So a bit of a cleaner one. Here it goes. Da, 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 da. That's a bit smoother. So the chords in Dubler are set, and there can't be any MIDI mapping that actually goes on within Dubler's chords. But we can you do that using MIDI effects within your door. So different doors do this different way. So at the moment, I've got it set. So yeah. If I sing a C, you can see the different chord that's being played every time I hit an individual note. If you wanted to change that chord based on the vowel, I couldn't do that because these aren't MIDI mappable within Dublin. But we can if we turn off the chords here. So we're just getting single notes now. Let's put this in C major to make things simple. So 
in the door lots of doors have this in through different ways but there is like a chord um uh midi effect that i can create different um intervals with that would then i could set up a few different ones that would then trigger based on vowels so if i wanted this to be say let's put a third and a fifth ba, ba, ba. let's do a fifth chord one there actually so we just got a seventh step going on there ba, ba, ba. Oh, actually, there's a few different ones. So let's do major seven, major chord, and minor ten. So we've got different ones here with different intervals that are basically showing, yeah, you can just create these to whatever you like. If you know theory particularly well, I don't, um, then you can set the intervals. Some of them will have chord presets anyway. So if you're in logic, um, then you could, uh, yeah, use their own chord one. So this major chord sounds like this with the single notes. Dun, dun, dun. This one sounds like this. Dun, dun, dun. That one's a bit crazy. And the major seventh. Dun, dun, dun. Let's change this one because it sounds a bit hectic. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, that's a bit jazzier. So this is going to sound probably really horrible hearing these different chords after the other but i'll show you the principle of how you could switch between these chords with vowels so basically what i can do is map the on of each individual little midi effect so that's r that's e and that's u so they, depending on how, you might want to adjust the range on this um, to make sure that you're hitting. So basically, how on and off works with dials is that if something's over 50%, then that'll be on. If it's under 50%, that'll be off. So when I say 50%, I mean on, on the dials here. So I was saying with an R. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I'm hitting the ooh there. So with an ooh, I'm just getting this on. Let's sing with the e. E, 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 e. I'm getting this major coming. We can adjust this range a bit so that it's always off. E, e, e. Ooh, ooh. Ah, ah, ah. E, e, e. <laughs> like I said, these chords sound horrible. But that's in principle how you can switch between chords of different vowels. It's unfortunately not particularly easy because it requires like complex MIDI mapping with it within your door. But there's something that we can definitely do in Dubber that would be low smarter and it's something we have thought about and is on our feature request list. So there's a sort of hacky workaround where you can sort of map dark vowels being over a certain amount to turn on certain MIDI effects, which then in turn changes the chords, but it's not perfect. But um, yeah, you can have a play around with that way. Charles was saying, I use Logic, I want to know how to make the auto-tune sound. So auto-tune is something that's a bit separate to kind of what we do. Um, so you can achieve the auto-tune sound just, well, with various auto-tune plugins with set keys. If you want, we have a video that's about sort of using Doubler as a vocoder, which is um, uh, kind of similar in that, I presume, do you mean auto-tune in that the pitch you're singing is auto-correcting? Um, so if you wanted to do that, you can set up doubler as a vocoder so the incoming note or chord is affecting the vocals that you're singing. If you want to just you get auto-tune, that's not even something that is particularly needed for doubler. Um, uh, you could do that just with sort of any auto-tune plugin that was out there. And if I've misunderstood, let me know, let me know if I have. Um, would be great if it was integrated in Double Three. Yes, we've got loads of good ideas um, for different ways that we can make vowels more prominent. It's something that we see is really underused the vowels in, in Doubler because they require you know this whole MIDI mapping process where you have to go in select different parameters. That's great for some people um, that they really want to get involved with the these like, automation points. But I, there's definitely a nicer way that you can more naturally p uh, play with sounds, and maybe that's. Um, something like chords presets based on vowels or maybe even our own synth or something along those lines but who knows um do, do, do. Where are we at with 
this. Oh yeah, so that is, I guess, a quick look at different ways that you can use Doubler in Samsung things. We're coming up to an hour now, so we can sort of wrap up a bit. If anyone has any last minute questions, I know this is maybe quite chaotic in terms of the audio on this stream, but I hope the ideas, like I said, in there were like quite fun and there's stuff that you can um, have a play around in. Just kind of, I guess, go through, definitely play with the bowels and have a go with how they can integrate into Samsung. The pitch and pitch bend and actually creating rises and drops. This is great for things like 808s and big bassy subs and actually triggers and basically, even if you're not wanting to do a rhythm whilst you're singing, you could actually use a trigger to change something. Let's show you that actually quickly because we did it with drums, but let's set up, um, let's do something really crazy um, just for fun <laughs> to show the principle. So if we, if we go back to that, so say we've got a chord. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. So we make it higher. Dun, dun, dun. Cool. So we've got the dry sound, and say when I'm singing along, I want to make a sound and switch everything to make it really drastically different. So what we were doing before was using dials, and we were like blending between lots of different stuff. Maybe I just want to make a sound and turn everything on. So we can also do that with triggers, and not as a kind of drum sound. If you haven't used triggers because you're a bit scared of like beatboxing, this is a really fun way to kind of integrate it in in your workflow. So let's create an effect rack with some different sounds. So like I said, let's just pick something crazy. Let's get some crystals. Dun. Great. Let's get a big shimmer. Dun. And let's get something at the end to move it all around. Let's go sound, let's do a tremolator again. Sorry, I was just reading the thing that's, um, if you want to use W2 to MIDI trigger starting and stopping recording for clips in Ableton, but you don't want to record being blown, so what type of clever sound could be used to only trigger, be used to only trigger recording, starting and stopping? Oh, okay, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's interesting. This is kind of what we're doing now. I'll show you it for turning. <laughs> I'll show you that for turning this on and how that could also be used for turning on, um, uh, recording clips as well. So what we were doing, we were going to do one more crazy. We were going to do like a tremolator, weren't we, as well? Let's. How does this all sound together? Dun. So we've got all of this going on and we can group all of these. And basically what we want to do is have this turn on or off. And like I said, we're using a trigger sound so we can go from a completely dry dun, 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 to dun, dun, dun. big crazy thing. So uh, like Wayne's just saying in the chat here about this is effect effectively turning things on and off with triggers. And this is quite tricky because it's about the training sound. And like you pointed out there, it's about making sure it's not getting confused when you're singing. So doubler for the triggers, let's delete these ones I've got here. So triggers are, when thinking about triggers, it's really important to think about just the very first initial transient sound. So if doubler hears a sound that is similar to that very first initial transient you train it on, then it's gonna trigger it. Um, so what it's doing is kind of trying to close this match and it allows for a bit of variation because obviously your voice changes a little bit. If we made it too accurate, you'd have to be like impossibly perfect with your your triggering. So there is, it's a bit careful and you wanna have a bit of like um, leeway. I think a tip can be, instead of just using one trigger, because if you use one trigger, then it's going to, um, 
repeatedly uh, send out well it's going to send out that trigger a lot more because it's the only one it's got trained and when it hears that sound it's thinking oh okay so maybe this one's closest to this trigger and it might do it out more so what you can do is let's so if we do a couple of usual sounds like we did before and then maybe we want a click like this so something that's really constant to be the trigger that changes things so let's record so you see these triggers move if I go so our click there is something completely different and we've also got a couple of other triggers normally trained so first one make sure you train them super accurately so when they're trained they're not getting confused another one is also yeah on the actual channel itself you can select the MIDI channel so the triggers are sent out on a MIDI output channel 10 so which is different from pitch but that's not going to affect chord mappings anyway but yeah so let's map that click to the on button of that effect so if you click this grouping and then click on that trigger they are now linked so if I go if they were linked uh, it's because this is on F sharp one let's turn that off ah. there we go it's because that was on so now if I click effect on effect off effect on effect off so when I'm singing bum, 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 I can whilst I'm singing introduce a click dun, 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 dun. And off. So even still, you could see in there it was sometimes mistriggering a little bit. So you might even want to hone that on even more. But things like something like click that's really consistent because with your voice you can vary a bit. If you can use something that's even not your voice, that adds a bit more consistency. Um, but you could do it with something like a you know, a sound, something that's really different from just the trick, like, like classic, like, or whatever. But if I wanted to record that in, then we can click on this, click on this, and then, da, da. Oh, what's going on now? Oh, and the triggers tab again. Da, 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 da. Dun, 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 dun. And it's playing. Dun, 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 dun. So yeah, it is triggering that then. It's one of those things that is difficult that you want to find one that's trained completely separately. Um, but I would recommend trying clicks, trying claps, um, or maybe something that's different from your usual and keeping something also that's a few triggers. Also sensitivity as well. If you want to make a really, you can put the sensitivity all the way down and make something that's really obvious. So this click, yeah, with the sensitivity down should be more consistent when I go. Dun, dun. Oh, unless that's mapped on the wrong note. Uh, no, actually, you know what's happening there is that the... <laughs> so this is important actually to bear in mind what I've just realized why that was triggering at the same time is that the triggers are sending out on notes so that's sending out F sharp 1 so if I hit an F sharp 1 in the chord then that's also going to trigger that at the same time so let's put that on something crazy like G8 and see if this makes a difference if we press the stop on here ba, ba. If I get off the triggers tab again. Ba, 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 ba. There we go. Okay, so now, yeah, it's pretty consistent where I can sing these chords. Da, da, da. Oh, I say that, it wasn't. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, well, yeah, bit of a sidetrack, but yeah, have a go with that and see if you, if you get there. It's one of those things where doubler the triggers are used for like beatboxing and stuff when you start to stray from that a bit and kind of use it as a sort of midi mapping to like record functions in your door the consistency is like it, it can be like difficult to really nail down so yeah it's, it's it's a tricky one but i think 
there's definitely something to be said there with effects anyway because you can turn those on and off a bit more consistently and it, it doesn't matter as much as accidentally hitting the record function for example Charles is saying, I'm playing around with synths like 80 sounds. I wanted to record with autotune or something because I hate the sound of my voice. <laughs> yeah, so I reckon the, vo the vocoder video would be a good one for you because with Dubber you can create vocoded sounds, but, which does a very similar thing where it's effectively tuning the audio of your voice to like chords or single notes. Um, I don't know if anyone is in the chat. Oh, actually, I can maybe do it now. Let me put it on the camera. We'll wrap things up. But let me, because I've just been waffling for ages about triggers and hitting record functions. <laughs> let me find the YouTube video for you. And I would definitely have a play around with that. Turn this off. So I can on the team did a really good video on how to use your voice or use doubler to create a vocoder in different doors. So that includes logic as well okay let me copy and paste this there we go so that's a video i recommend watching basically yeah what that is is i can um uh goes through how you can use w2 as a vocoder in fl logic in ableton so you can watch the logic bit you can skip to it and yeah how you can use these like 80 synths that you're controlling to not only how you use doubler to not only control the AT synths and stuff, but actually to also um, mess around with your voice in real time, which is super fun um, and good for people like me who don't have a good voice at all. <laughs> cool. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. I've waffled for long enough, made some weird noises and sounds. So um, we'll wrap it up. Thanks for watching. We have our live stream also scheduled for next month on February, which I believe is about pitch bend. Um, I kind of spoke about pitch bender briefly in this about like rises and drops. We have a video coming out on other ways you can use pitch bend. So I think there's some fun stuff that we can play with on a, a live stream. Um, as always, if you want to see something in particular in a live stream, or if you want to like see a video or, or a topic in a video or something like that, let us know and we can always like um, play around with that. If you go to our forums, forum.broccoli.co.uk, you can post in there for ideas, um, uh, stream ideas or stuff you'd wanna see, or you can just message us on Facebook, Instagram, email, whatever you like, we're, we're always um, reading through everything. So yeah, thanks for watching, um, thanks for joining. We'll see you on the next live stream and yeah, have a good one.